Hi everyone, this is Mehmoo Sheikh and in this video I will start a discussion on one of the important concept which is functions. Okay, so here we will see what is a function and what are the advantages of writing down the program in terms of functions and what are the various types of functions in C++ and then we will see the various examples and then we will move on to have a C++ program okay with which we will try to uh, see how we can write the function okay so now here I have listed down some points and with the help of these points we will try to understand the concept of these functions okay so functions are the group of statements that works together to perform a task okay so the functions are the group of statements and these statements works together to perform a single task Okay. and every C++ program have at least one main function okay so in each and every program C++ program there will be at least one function will be present and that function is main function okay apart from that main function if you want to create your own functions you can create as much as functions you want okay you can create your own functions and you can make use of built-in functions as well okay so that we will see a few moment later okay so now we have understood that functions are some set of statements it's a collection of statements which works together to perform a single task so the major purpose here to write down the functions is to perform a task okay next what are the advantages of writing functions okay or what are the advantages uh, if we write the program in terms of functions okay so here I have listed down some advantages first advantage is our reusability gets increased so if we have an habit of writing down the programs in terms of functions then we can use the same code again and again in other programs as well suppose you are working on a project and you have chosen the C++ or you have chosen any of the object oriented programming language and in object oriented programming we can make use of already existing code in multiple places so that we don't have to write the same piece of code again and again suppose in a project I am working on developing some functionality okay and that functionality I have already developed in some other project so instead of writing down that same functionality once again in my current project what I will do is I will take down the code from my earlier project and I will use the same code in my current project okay so like this I am reusing my old project code in my new project okay so which increases the reusability factor so it's not that you can use the code in different projects within the same project also if you want to use the code which you have already written then you can easily use that code okay so the one of the advantage of writing down the programs in terms of functions is you can reuse your code many times in your program next advantage is debugging becomes easy okay so this way of writing down the program in terms of functions reduces your time in searching the errors okay because we will be writing down the programs in terms of functions since our program is been written in the form of functions we can easily find that function where we have got an error okay so we can debug our program easily next advantage is we can build our own library if we have if we have a habit of writing down our program in terms of functions we can create our small modules which works independently and we can use those modules as a library in other programs and we can give those libraries to others so that they can use them in their program and they can use the functionality of that library in their program okay next advantage is portability since I have already told you that these functions are reusable okay and we can easily use these functions in other programs as well we can easily port these functions between multiple programs okay which increases the feature of portability okay, so these are some of the advantages of writing down the programs in terms of functions okay now we will see what are the types of 
functions in C++. In C++, there are two types of functions. One is built-in function and second one is user-defined functions. Okay, so built-in functions are those functions which will already be present in C++. Okay, we just have to make use of those functions uh, to get the functionality of that function. Okay, and user-defined functions are those functions which user will be creating by their own. Okay, so first let us discuss what is built-in functions. Okay, so these functions are also known as built-in library functions. Okay, next point is these functions are included in particular header file so that we can easily access these functions by just calling at the top of our program. These built-in functions will be included inside a header file. These functions will be packed in the form of a header file and we just have to include those header files at the top of our program. Okay. Example for built-in functions like iostream.h, math.h, okay and strings.h and iostream.h is a header file which provides stream related input and output functions okay and then there is one more header file which is math.h which includes all the functions related to mathematics which contains mathematical functions and we have another library which is strings.h which handles string functions okay so whenever we will be working on the strings in our c++ program instead of writing down the code by our own we can make use of this strings.h library or header file so by including that header file it gives us some predefined functions which we can make use to perform our string related functions in c++ code so once we include this header file we will be reducing lot of our code and our program becomes efficient and the performance of our program gets increased okay so these are some of the built-in functions which are available okay apart from these functions there are many built-in functions available in c++ okay so now uh, this this is everything about functions and type of functions okay and there is another type of function which is user defined functions which we'll be going to see um, next okay so as I have told you that in user defined functions we will be writing down the functions by our own instead of importing or instead of getting the functions from any other library here in this user defined functions we will be writing down the function functions by our own Okay, so that is what user defined functions. Okay, so here now we will see how we can create our own functions. Okay, so defining a function includes many parts. Okay, so here we will see what are those various components of a function. Okay, so here as you can see every function definition composes following components. Okay, so every function definition contains these many components first one is name of the function what is the name of your function which you want to create then you also need to mention the body of the function and then if you want to provide parameters to your function then you need to provide that parameter list as well okay so you also need to specify what is the return value of your function with your function what value you are returning to a calling function and then you also need to specify what is the return type you are using in your function whether your function is going to return an integer value or a float value so all these things you need to mention at the time of defining your function so we will come to know better we will understand these all these things with the help of an example okay here as you can see I have declared a function int student and parameter and then return value so here in this declaration of a function I will be covering all these components okay so now so now first component is name of the function and which is add student okay and the second component is body of the function okay so whatever code block of code you will see inside these two curly braces this called as body of the function Okay, so inside the body of the function we will be writing down the statements of code okay so that also you need to specify 
and then third is parameter list which you can see inside these two round brackets integer roll number is the parameter list okay so you can give one parameter or you can give more than one parameter it's completely up to you okay so next uh, parameter list okay which is this one roll number is the parameter list okay and then next one is return value okay so now as i have told you that with this function of add student i'm what type of value i'm returning okay i'm returning roll number okay so now my return value is roll number and then last one is return type so what is the return type of this function so the, as you can see here this integer is the return type so from this function i am returning the integer value that's why the return type for this function is int okay so this is the structure or design of our function so this is how we need to declare our function okay now let us see few examples so here i have written down two examples so this is the function prototype so with this prototype i am telling to the compiler that there is a function in this entire program with the name make sum this is the name of the function and the return type of this function is integer and the parameter list of this function is also integer and this function will going to take two integer values so at the top itself at the beginning of this program itself i will tell to the compiler that i will be creating this function in this program okay then I will be writing down the main function inside the main function I will print the value of this sum and I will be making a call to this function make sum okay this is my calling function okay from this I am calling the function and this is the call function make sum as you can see here the both the names are same so here I am writing down the implementation of this function so from this make sum inside the vo void main i am passing the values for my integer parameters 2 and 4 okay, so i am passing 2 and 4 as a value and these two values gets passed to this make sum function as a parameter okay and these two values will come and store inside this a and b and then i am making the sum of these two values and i am returning the sum again here to this calling function and i will make a sum here and i am returning the sum to this make sum function and i am printing that value so here in this example i am passing some static values 2 and 4 so how you can make this as dynamic how you can write a program which accept values from the user which you can see here okay everything is same here inside the main function i am declaring two integer variables x and y and then with this c out statement i'm asking the user to enter the values for x and y that values i will be storing inside my x variable and y variable and then from here the way i make a call to this make some function with this inside the main exactly the same way i'm doing here inside my void main function but here in this case i was passing some static values but in this case i am passing the variable x and y dynamic values okay so these x and y will be holding the values which user will be going to enter at runtime okay so i'm calling this make some function by passing the values which the user will be going to enter okay and then this function will get called and the values will get passed and assigned inside this variables a and b then a and b the value of a and b will get added up and then it will return that output to this calling function and then i will be printing that value here so this is how we write simple functions so in this example we have seen how we can write a simple function which return a value to its calling function so now this is the calling function and this is the called function so this is a simple example and with the help of this example we have understood how we can write a prototype how we can declare a function and how we can make a call to that function and how we can implement that function so uh, in this video we have understood everything about functions definition of function advantages of functions types of functions and then what is built-in function what are user defined functions and then what type of functions comes under built-in functions okay and then what are what is the criteria of 
defining a user defined function and we also saw few examples as well okay so i hope you understood the concept of functions in c++ that's all for this video guys if you like this video click on like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching